Welcome to Module 1, Lesson 7. Let's get started. Today, we will be learning how to use the commutative property in multiplication. We are learning this so that we can multiply and divide fluently. We will use math in real life situations. We will know that we are successful when we can draw two arrays that show that changing the order of factors does not change the product. What is commutative? Factors can change their order without changing the product. We call that the commutative property. This is a three by four array. It has three rows of four. The multiplication equation would look like this. Three times four equals 12. I know that because I can count by fours three times. Are you ready? Four, eight, twelve. This is a four by three array. It has four rows of three. The multiplication equation would be four times three equals twelve. I know that because I can count by threes four times. Are you ready? Three, six, 9, 12. So we can say that 3 times 4 equals 12 and 4 times 3 equals 12. What do you notice about the two equations? Yes, the order of the factors has switched places, but the product is the same. That is the commutative property. Let's draw an array that shows four rows of two. One, two, three, four rows. One, two, two in each row. Skip count by twos to find the total. We can skip count by two four times. Are you ready? Two, four, six. Eight, four times two equals eight. Four rows of two equals eight. Now here I've just rotated the array. How many rows are there now? How many in each row? How many in all? I see one, two rows. I see one, two, three, four in each row. To find out how many in all, I can count by four, two times. Are you ready? Four, eight. Two times four equals eight. Two rows of four equals eight. Why does the total stay the same? Answer. Factors can switch places, but the total stays the same because of the commutative property of multiplication. Okay, we're ready to try our skill on a read, draw, write, question. Remember the first one we do together, and then at the end of the video, I give you one to do on your own. So the read, draw, write process is called the RDW. R stands for reading the question and picking out the most important information. 
D stands for drawing a picture. Now that could be just an equation. It could be an array. It could be a tape diagram. It could be whatever you picture in your head to find the answer. However, if the question specifically states that you must draw a certain kind of math model, that's what you do. Okay, the last step is write the answer in a complete sentence. That means writing out a sentence with words even if the question doesn't tell you to, you still want to answer the question in a complete sentence. While we read, I'll be annotating the question. That means I'll be circling and underlining things that I think are most important. Lucas has three boxes with seven pencils in each. Okay, I think it's important that there's someone named Lucas. I think it's important that he has three boxes with seven pencils in each. So I'm immediately thinking of three boxes of pencils with seven pencils laying side by side. I'm picturing that in my head. Aja has seven boxes with three in each box. So there's someone named Aja with seven boxes with three pencils in each box. So I'm picturing Aja, she has seven boxes with three pencils in each box. Hmm, I noticed right away that Lucas's numbers and Aja's numbers are the same, but they're in a different order. That's important. Question, do they have an equal number of pencils? Okay, I'm gonna think back about the skill that we just learned of drawing an array and then rotating it and coming up with a different multiplication equation to see if it's the same. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm going to go to my Jamboard. If you have access to Google at home, you can always open your own Jamboard or you could do this along with me on paper and pencil. So to go to the Jamboard, I go to the browser I type in Jamboard, and there is a link below in the description box if you'd like to follow that link, or you can just type it in yourself. I'm clicking on the plus sign to open a new jam, and I'm grabbing my pen. Now I'm going to go back to the question because I want to make sure I have the correct information. It says Lucas has three boxes with seven pencils in each. Okay, so Lucas. Three boxes with seven in each. That means he has three groups of seven. So I need one, two, three groups of seven. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to put hashtag marks. I don't need to draw circles every time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's Lucas and his pencils. Going back. Yes, Aja has seven boxes with three in each. So that means there should be seven groups with three in each, seven rows of three. Aja. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so here we have three groups of seven. Here we have seven groups of three. So I can either count by sevens or I can count every single little pencil. Since I know my sevens pretty well, I'm gonna count by sevens. Are you ready? Seven, 
14, 21. Lucas has 21 pencils. Now let's look at Aja's. We can count by three, seven times. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. Aja also has 21 pencils. Now, that was a bit more work than I should have done because if I knew anything about the commutative property, I would know immediately that three times seven is equal to seven times three. That's the commutative property. All right, the final step is to type out my answer in words. I'm going to say, let's look back at the question. Do they have an equal number of pencils? Yes, they have an equal number of pencils because three times seven is equal to seven times three. I know this because of the commutative property. The commutative property. Okay, so now I've read, I've drawn, and I've written a complete answer. Let's go back to the presentation and see if my answer is correct. Answer. Yes, they have the same number of pencils. I know this because 3 times 7 and 7 times 3 both equal 21. Okay, so remember, you might have more information in your answer or less information. As long as you answer the question in a complete sentence, you should be on the right track. But if you want to go above and beyond and be excellent, you would want to explain why you came to your answer. All right. This is the problem that you'll do on your own. This is the read, draw, write question that you will do independently. So when I'm finished talking, you will pause on the screen, read it, find the important information. You'll do a drawing. It could be on pencil and paper. It could be on a Jamboard. And remember, the link to the Jamboard is in the description box below. Or you could write on a dry erase board if you have one at home. Whatever you want to write on. Now, the next step is to find your answer and write a sentence. When you are all done and you are ready, you can go into the description box below and find the correct answer. Make sure that your answer is similar to the correct answer in the answer box below. All right, I'll read it for you. Does two times four equal four times two? Draw two arrays and skip count to solve. Explain your thinking. All right, it's your turn. Go do your best, and I will see you in the next video.